gravity. Gravity is what holds you and me down to the Earth. Gravity is what keeps the Earth rotating around the Sun. Gravity is what keeps the, keeps the Moon rotating around the Earth. Uh, gravity can be a dangerous thing, as I'm sure you've discovered. One way that we can think about gravity is by thinking about potential energy. So all of us are in the uh, gravitational field of the Earth, which means the Earth has a pretty uh, pretty strong pull on us. Uh, and that means that it has a potential to make us fall down to the ground. For example, if I'm standing up on a ledge like this, you can see this ledge is about a foot and a half off the ground, there's a potential that I might fall down. Now, as I step off or jump off this ledge, uh, I'm turning my potential energy into the motion of kinetic energy, which is motion of me. The potential energy I had is equal to the height of this, uh, the height of this dresser or whatever it is, and my weight times my weight. That's the potential energy. That is a form of energy. As I'm moving, I turn that into kinetic energy, which is equal to uh, uh, my mass times uh, velocity, my velocity squared. Uh, so, uh, you can also imagine that if we dug a hole, maybe, to the center of the Earth, and we pushed you into that hole, for example, uh, you would fall all the way to the center of the Earth. But at that point, you would be suspended there, because you would be pulled equally in all directions by the Earth, because there's the same amount of Earth on every side of you once you're in the center of the Earth. So you'd have many other problems, but you would no longer have the problem of potential energy. Someone would, have to, someone would have to reach in and exert a force on you to pull you out of the hole from the center of the earth to give you potential energy again, that potential that you would fall uh, towards the center of the earth. So we're going to look today real quickly at um, this skateboard bearing, which I have suspended from the ceiling, and it has a certain potential energy. If, for example, I were to cut this string the skateboard bearing, which is about 15 grams, which is 0 0.015 kilograms, as you should know, is about, uh, if you look at the bottom there, it's about 4 centimeters off of this table. So it has a potential energy right now, if I were to cut the string, equal to 4 centimeters times its mass, 15 grams, times the force due to gravity, which changes mass into weight. Uh, and the force due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So if you multiply that all together, mass times the force of gravity, or mass times the acceleration due to gravity, is going to give you the force or the weight of the object. And then times the distance it is off the ground is going to give you the potential energy. So what we'll do is we'll pretend like I'm not going to cut this string, and that the point here where th this is at is its potential energy is zero. It can't go down any farther unless I cut that string. But if I get it moving like this, you can see as it's going back and forth that the lowest point it gets to is that point it was initially hanging at, where the potential energy is zero, and that's also where it travels the fastest as it's coming through. And then it stops up here at each end and has more potential energy because it gets up to seven or eight centimeters off the ground. But the kinetic energy actually goes to zero because it stops moving for just an instant it goes back down uh, and starts accelerating through that center point again. So you can imagine if this was an airplane flying around the ground, which is the top of this dresser, uh, it would uh, not only be attracted to the ground, but it would also be attracted to other objects, like perhaps this candle over here, or perhaps Mickey and Minnie uh, in the lamp. Uh, and as, it got, as an airplane gets closer to a mountain, it's attracted to that mountain uh, just a little bit. It's hard to notice because it's not as big as the Earth, but it's attracted a little bit. So if we pretend like this magnet is a mountain, you can see that as I get close to this uh, skateboard bearing, it's going to have an effect on it. It's going to move it a little bit. So you can see I'm, I'm drawing it out towards, towards the magnet. Now, if, for example, we say that this magnet is perhaps uh, well, let's say the width of this, uh, of this roll of thread away from 
um, the bearing, it's going to pull on that bearing. And we can measure how much force that'll exert. So as I'm pulling it away, we're up to now four and a half centimeters off the ground. Now we're up to five centimeters off the ground. Oh, and then it fell away. So we were able to pull it up, up to, oops, about five centimeters off the ground. So uh, if we started at about, it actually looks like about 3.5 now, it must have stretched out a little and gone up to five. That means we've gone a centimeter and a half. We were able to raise that a centimeter, centimeter and a half and it's a 0 0.015 kilogram object. So if we raise it a center, centimeter and a half, you can now go in uh, to your lesson assignment and say, how much uh, force was this magnet exerting on that ball bearing and how much did it change its potential energy? So use the formulas that you see uh, in the project uh, lesson in the text and you can answer those questions.